So I'm, I'm going to talk very briefly about the study design for this study, hopefully just to give you enough information. Um, it's obviously a very complex study. But, but the general schema is presented here. Valley presented it in sp specific terms, in terms of the biomarkers and the drugs that we'll be using for the first stage. But as this is a general rolling study that will incorporate new biomarkers and drugs as we go along, this is the general idea here, where patients, um, patients come to you and you submit their tumor assessment to be anal analyzed for our study. Uh, through this common profile, biomarker profiling system. And then the results come back to us at the STAT Center. So if a patient is positive for a specific biomarker, that patient will be, de will be assigned to the associated substudy. So if a patient has biomarker one, they'll be assigned to substudy one and randomized between experimental therapy and stand versus standard of care, and so on as we move through the different biomarkers. If a patient doesn't have a, does not have any of the eligibility biomarkers for the studies that are open at, at that given time, they'll be assigned to the non-match substudy and um, randomized between the non-matched therapy and the standard of care. Now, for patients that end up having multiple of, of the eligibility biomarkers, we'll be randomizing those patients between the possible sub-studies that they could participate in. But patients will only be notified of the sub-study that they're assigned to. So the objectives, just to remind you, are for, um, this is a phase two, three design. And what we mean by a phase two, three design is that this has an early interim analysis that, that only is evaluating early stopping for futility. So we're not going to stop accrual at this point, and we're not going to report to you what the results are the phase two analysis unless the study stops early for futility. And the phase two component will be evaluating whether or not there's sufficient evidence to continue into the phase three portion of the trial by comparing progression-free survival between the patients that were randomized to the experimental therapy versus the standard of care within each substudy. So each substudy is conducted independent of the other substudies. If the study does continue past the phase two interim analysis, we will continue enrolling patients and we'll move into the phase three component. And the phase three component has co-primary objectives. The first objective is to evaluate whether or not there's a statistically and clinically meaningful difference in progression-free survival between the two treatment arms. So does this experimental therapy, does the targeted therapy or the non-matched therapy improve outcomes over the standard of care? And then the second objective is to evaluate, uh, to compare overall survival between the two treatment arms. So this is the, the view of the substudy um, in just in pretty explicit detail here. So patients are assigned to the substudy based on their biomarker results and then randomized between the two treatment arms. And then we, as we start accruing to the study, the in phase two interim analysis is to occur when we observe 55 progression events. And one of the reasons why I want to point this out is that 55 events is not a very big number. So we're going to reach this analysis very quickly. And that's why part of what we're talking about is we want to screen these agents quickly and stop if we're not seeing big benefit. But part of that is that because we're accruing things so quick, um, we're going to get to this analysis very quickly, we need the highest quality data. And I'll talk a little bit more of that in a second. So if we, so if we establish futility, the study will stop. And then, of course, we might, we'll replace it with other studies or other things will happen moving forward. If we continue on past the phase two interim analysis, we'll have phase three interim analyses, which, and those interim analyses can evaluate early stopping based on overall survival for efficacy, or we could stop for futility based on progression-free survival and overall survival. If the study doesn't stop in any of these interim analyses, we'll complete accrual. There will be about 12 months of follow-up, and the final analysis will occur when we, we observe 256 overall survival events and 290 progression-free survival events. So here's the details about the actual sample size and approximate analysis times for each of the substudies that we, we have planned currently. And you can see also the prevalence estimates for each of the substudies. So S1400A is the non-match substudy that we're randomizing the metamune um, PDL1 agent against um, docetaxel. And we expect about 55% of the patients on the study at this moment will be assigned to that substudy. And the sample size for that substudy, and I say approximate because, as I said, it's a role, it's an interim analysis, we'll continue accruing patients, but we, the analysis time is based on 55 progression events. So we expect that study to have about 170 patients with an approximate analysis time of eight months after study activation. So that's very soon. And if the study ma um, meets, uh, doesn't stop for futility, we'll continue into the phase three, and the sample size for the phase three is 380 patients with an approximate analysis time of 20 months, 21 months after study activation. 
the uh, Genentech study S1400B, which is looking at the PI, PIK3CA mutation, um, actually is a little bit different from, from the other sub-studies, and I'm going to save that for last, but so I'll move right to S1400C, which is the Pfizer drug looking at CDK46, and we expect the prevalence on that sub-study to be about 12% of the patients to be assigned. The approximate sample size for that substudy is 124 patients with an analysis time of 11 months after study activation. The phase three sample size is 312 patients with an approximate analysis time of 45 months. So following next is S1400D, which is the FGFR uh, substudy, and we expect about 9% of the patients to be assigned to that substudy, the phase two interim analysis to occur with about 112 patients enrolled on that study, and also at about 11 months after study activation. Sample size for the phase three is 302 patients with an analysis time of 53 months after study activation. And then finally, the S1400E, which is the MET, um, MET study, uh, the HGF study, we expect about 16% of patients to be assigned to that sub-study, 144 patients accrued by the phase two interim analysis at nine months after study activation, and 326 patients for the phase three at 37 months after study activation. Now the Genentech study, um, had they had two questions, so it's for the PIK3CA positive patients, and the found that we're using both a definition that's for positivity based on foundation medicine and a definition that they wanted to look at as well. So the Genentech definition is actually a subgroup or a subset of those that are defined to be positive for the study. So we have we actually have two goals we're looking at here, and so that's why I have these two lines. We assume about 8% of the patients screened will be assigned to this sub-study, and of them, about 6% of them will be Genentech positive. So we have an accrual goal based on the Genentech definition, but the total sample size for that study is going to be about 152 patients at the phase two, about 19 months after study activation, and about 400 patients for the phase three, about six years after study activation. So you all are here to learn about this study, but part of the reason for that is that because we're partners in this, and we need you, of course, to enroll patients on the study and also follow the protocol so that we have the best quality data. So the protocol is set up where there's the master protocol, which is formulated just like our standard protocols in SWOG, and then there are appendices for each of the sub-studies. And the appendices also follow all the same format of our SWOG protocols. So if you know this, that Section 5 is always eligibility, Section 9 always has the study calendar, Section 14 has the data submission schedule. That's all standard across all of these studies. So there's the main protocol and the appendices. But of course, if questions come up, you have questions about registration or eligibility or any other type of data submission question, you can email lungquestion at crab.org and we will of course be happy to answer your questions and help you out. So as Valley had presented earlier, the ultimate goal of this study is to identify and quickly lead to approval of safe and effective regimens based on matched predictive biomarker and targeted drug pairs. And the role for you in this is that this is going to be achieved by recruitment of re and registration of appropriate patients, so patients who satisfy the eligibility criteria, by supplying accurate and complete data, and also timely submission of these data, because as I said, we're on an accelerated timeline for this study, so the best quality data submitted in the highest um, and rapid fashion is how we will complete the study with success.